we are ready to get started. And Amber, are you going to be setting up some of the logistics or can we go ahead and take it away? Oh, I was um, just going to do the welcome real quick. Oh, beautiful. Then, go ahead. And then I'll just turn it over to you and you can go through the logistics and... Awesome. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is Practitioner Session 1A. So we have three presenters today in this session. First, we have Rochelle Martin, Ashley Rhodes uh, from uh, Long Beach Unified, and then Albert Morales will be joining us at 9.35. So we have a split session. I want to share with you that this particular session is sponsored by the CSU Center to Close the Opportunity Gap. This is a new center uh, across four different CSUs that will serve uh, thousands of students in K-12 and then uh, teacher education programs as well. So just so you know, the, the uh, session is being recorded. We will be using the uh, chat box for discussion and I'm going to turn it over to our presenters. So thank you so much for joining us. Awesome. Thank you for the introduction. We're really happy to be here today to take you through um, a little bit of learning and hopefully some thinking about um, how this applies to your role in working with students and families. Um, as uh, mentioned, we would like you to just identify yourself in the chat. Um, it's nice for us to just get an idea of who is here today. Um, again, go ahead and use that chat feature and um, if anything pops into your head or any questions along the way and at the end in our Q&A, we will um, address any of those questions. Uh -oh. There we go. All right, so um, today we're gonna be talking about some strategies to support, support students and families, um, social emotional needs during distance learning, um, and really focusing on um, some of those really practical strategies. Um, and we just invite you to think about, you know, what is gonna be the best approach for um, the families and students that you work with. Um, to just kind of introduce both of us here. That's um, Ashley Rhodes and myself. We're gonna be taking you through this session. Um, we both work for Long Beach Unified and are um, alumni of Cal State Long Beach. So um, really happy to have gotten such a wonderful education and experience through, the, um, uh, through this university um, and really being able to apply that to our local community of um, teachers and learners. Um, I am currently the special education curriculum leader as well as our um, collaborative co-teaching coordinator um, and Ashley is a special education curriculum coach. Um, her expertise um, tends to be more within students with more significant needs where mine is uh, more focused on students with more mild to moderate disabilities um, and Ashley also has a role in supporting our um, induction teachers in our school district. And that's us just being really happy and excited about the job um, that we get to do in our community. Yes. All right, so I wanted to start with just um, reading this quote to you, and you have probably seen this recently, but just take a minute to think about this quote. Um, Relationships before rigor, grace before grades, patience before programs, and love before lessons. Um, this is a quote that I think um, applies to what we do all the time but has become extremely critical as we move to distance learning. Um, one of the things that we found um, in supporting students and families during distance learning is when um, teachers and educators and schools had really established um, positive open communication and relationships with their students and families, distance learning was um, much easier. Um, it, not that it's easy, but it was a much smoother transition from that day-to-day -day interaction to um, the virtual teaching and learning um, when those established relationships were there. So it really became that, that um, virtual learning experience really was an extension of what was happening within the classroom. So I just invite you to keep this um, kind of in mind um, as you're thinking about now that we're moving in for most districts um, into virtual learning with families that we probably don't have relationships with yet, 
right, new students, how important it is to spend the time to invest in building those relationships um, and really getting to know um, about your students and their families um, and their needs. Um, so one of the things that um, has been kind of guiding our technology implementation in Long Beach Unified um, for many, many years is um, the TPAC model, which is really that integration of technology, pedagogy, um, and content knowledge. Um, so as we move into looking at some of these practical tools for looking at um, supporting students and families' social emotional needs, um, we want you to think about technology not being um, something that we're going to implement just because it's it's fun and new and there's so many things to learn, but really thinking about what is the purpose and what is the best tool for that. Um, so before we move into the tools, I want us to just kind of be grounded in thinking about um, what are social emotional needs, what are those social emotional competencies, um, and then we're going to move into kind of that starting point for um, getting to know where our families and students are. Um, this is a resource, if you have not heard of it before, I invite you to um, check out their website, check out their resources. It's CASEL, which is the Collaborative for Academic and Social Emotional Learning. Um, in the you know, recent years, we've really been doing a lot in our school district to focus on social emotional learning. And um, at times we really need to step back and say, what actually are the skills the social emotional skills that we are um, supporting with students. Um, and you'll see um, here we have self-awareness, self-management, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision making. Um, on the CASEL website, they, um, uh, their mission is really around um, advocating for equity and excellence um, within social emotional um, social emotional learning. Um, and we've highlighted here self-awareness because self-awareness really involves students being able to identify their own feelings, students being able to um, uh, identify their, their own thoughts and values, and also being able to, um, uh, really being able to think about within those areas, can I um, identify my strengths and needs? Um, and that's where we're starting with our kind of practical approaches today for um, getting to know their social emotional um, needs. So keeping this in mind, because sometimes when we get into the technology, we focus so much on all of the cool things that technology can do and all of the different platforms, but we need to remember to focus on what is it that we're really trying to understand about our students and families needs. Um, and again, we're going to be focusing on just kind of that initial step uh, or um, initial step of self awareness. Um, so learning from our Long Beach Unified educators. Um, Ashley and I worked very, very closely with our education specialists um, during school closures. Um, and at that time, everyone was just trying to figure it out, right? Everyone was trying to figure out, how do I know what my students need? What is the best way to um, you know, teach this specific content? How can I keep kids engaged? And we learned so much in this journey with our teachers. Um, that most of what we're sharing today were ideas that were either gained through focus groups with um, our education specialists in our district or were ideas that they adapted and used and found success with. Um, so that's why we wanted to share them with you today. Um, so I'm going to pull this up first. So when we think about virtual check-ins, right, so if we're looking at that social emotional competency of um, self-awareness, right? Can I identify my feelings? Can I share them? Do I know what I'm good at? Do I know what I need help with? Can I communicate that? Um, 
when we're checking in with students, when we have them in person, right? So before distance learning, there's lots of cues and ways that we are able to tell how our students are doing um, without very um, intentional structures for that, right? Teachers do greetings at the door, um, right? We have that opportunity for um, just daily interactions with our students, seeing how our students are interacting um, on campus, all give us insight onto their, um, their social emotional regulation, on their, their needs um, emotionally, right? Think about how much body language has to offer us. Um, also, we can tell students if students' basic needs are being met um, by um, our interactions with them, right? Are they being fed? Do they have um, uh, the materials and resources they need? Are they coming with, you know, do they have good hygiene? Are those things that we can see when we have students in our classroom and we're able to interact with them on a regular basis? And also just when you really know your students and have that um, kind of deep relationship with them, you are able to tell just through their personality and through them um, being in your room, you know, where are they in their feeling for that day? Well, during distance learning, a lot of that is missed, right? When you don't have that ongoing opportunity to interact with them. Um, so it's important that during distance learning, we are really taking the time to make sure that we are checking in on these things that we might take for granted when we have um, live students in front of us in a classroom. Um, so a couple of considerations for um, checking in with students' social emotional needs during distance learning. Um, the first is just to think about what's a consistent structure to use when checking in with your students. Um, so at first, you might consider doing daily check-ins, like at the close of every day, um, at the close of every you know, um, synchronous live opportunity, or maybe even at the introduction. Um, and that might gradually release dependent on your relationship with them and once your routines get established. Um, it might also be that you have particular families and students that you need to check in with a little more frequently, right? And again, that comes from as you build that relationship um, knowing what your students in, um, need and being able to respond to that. Um, and then it's about, again, that like that TPAC model of thinking about what's the best tool? What, what, are, um, what am I going to invest in teaching my students and families to use? What's going to be the most appropriate for my students' abilities um, and for their um, age level? Um, and then also, what is going to be the easiest? I mean, honestly, when we first start, we want to make things as easy for students and families as possible. Um, so, you know, again, sometimes we get so excited about all of the technology. We um, try so many different things. We don't allow um, our students and families to get comfortable with understanding one platform. So just being aware of the layers and being really purposeful around the tools that we're selecting. Um, so thinking about, and, and we're going to share with you some, some just kind of practical tools for doing that. So again, thinking about um, in the district that you work with or within your role, what would be available and what also is um, uh, the most useful for the purpose of social emotional check-ins. Um, and then something else to think of, think about is um, when we're working with students and family, that, that progression of the questions that we're asking. Um, so we don't wanna um, start with huge open-ended questions, especially for some of our earliest learners. We wanna think about what are kind of concrete, simple ways that students can engage and respond um, about their emotional needs, about their emotional experience at the time. And then we can progress into more kind of complex, open-ended questions. Um, and again, thinking about our littlest learners, um, some of it that we're going to share with you are tools that can be done with the support of an adult, but some of it might need to just happen in a live meet with a student. Um, and also just thinking about the continuum of, of sensitivity is what we called it. Um, so, you know, kind of building towards if so, a topic might be more sensitive to a student, um, kind of building up towards that instead of instead of leading with um, something that might be really 
um, sensitive or um, complex for a student to even just feel comfortable with with sharing or talking about and we're going to show some um, examples of that in just a second. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Ashley Rhodes and she's going to take us into um, some of those practical technology tools as well as um, sharing with us some examples of what those can look like. Hello, everybody. Um, so like Michelle said, I am going to be taking you through some specific examples, if I can pull up. Hang on, let me find my right window. Here we go. Um, some specific examples from what we have um, seen from the field. Um, in terms of what teachers have created. So like Rochelle said, um, Long Beach Unified is a G Suite Google Apps uh, district. So much of the um, resources that teachers were utilizing were embedded within the G Suite system. Um, things like Google Forms, which are surveys that teachers can use with students and families for check-ins. Jamboard is a um, virtual kind of digital whiteboard that's interactive. Um, we saw teachers using Poll Everywhere, and we saw a lot of teachers find great success in connecting during those live synchronous meets. So when we say synchronous, we, we mean that we're doing um, uh, connections with students and families through Google Meets or Zoom. Um, and, and those were really four ways that teachers were, were finding success in how to um, check in um, on that self-awareness with students. So I'm going to show you a couple of really quick examples on what this looks like um, that we, some things that we have pulled from the field. So this was a daily check-in. Um, that was created by uh, Rosemary Albalera, who is one of our specialized healthcare SDC teachers in Long Beach Unified. So she teaches um, the students with the most significant needs. And I think when we're um, working with the early ed population, and then also um, for students with moderate severe disabilities, we're really needing to rely heavily on the people who know um, they're these students and children the best, which typically is their families. And so um, needing to remember what that looks like, you know, you might be seeing students and families as uh, they're dropping students off at school, but what does that look like digitally in a, in a digital environment? So this teacher created a daily check-in with a Google form um, just to check in with the parents and the child um, every day. So she was really able to set up some great relationships. Um, distance learning hasn't been easy for a lot of our families. And so she was really putting herself out there as a strong support um, for parents and to really check in to see what's going well, um, what they might need some extra additional support with, whether it be um, things specifically related to students or even just technology issues. Um, so we do have an, another example of what a daily check-in can look like um, in terms of self-awareness for students. Rochelle's going to drop a link into the chat um, so that you can, if you have a Gmail account, you can access the form directly. Um, but I'm also going to be sharing it on the screen here. And we just have a couple of questions here to think about, one being, uh-oh, what just happened? See, now we're having tech issues that I'm modeling. I'm modeling tech issues right now. Okay, so one of the um, questions that um, we wanted you just to kind of think through for about the next minute or two is, what is one, what are some of the noticings that you have about the way the questions are organized? So like Rochelle said earlier, um, that we're really trying to be mindful of um, kind of getting to know students first and what do those questions look like um, before we start asking more personal questions. So taking a look at this Google form, um, what do you notice about the way the questions are organized? And then what are ways that this can be accessible for early learners? So there's some structures and some features that we've built into this Google form um, that 
that you can think through about what are some of those um, features in there that that are making the text accessible. Maybe it's being enhanced with picture support. Um, maybe it's being enhanced with a choice board. So just to kind of um, stop and think and reflect, I'm going to escape out of here and I'm going to show a live version here right now. I'm just gonna pause for about one minute and scroll through this if you haven't been able to access the, the link for the form just so you can take a look. And I think Rochelle's dropping in those two kind of guiding questions into the chat as well, so you can reference in there also. And Ashley, we have about five minutes left. Okay. So, um, we might wanna just go through the survey together. Um, and if you are noticing anything about kind of the progression of questions or ways that this is being made, um, ways that this is being made accessible, you can go ahead and drop that into the chat. So we have um, a, a check-in titled, How Are You Feeling? There's an image up at the top that provides students with some visual supports for choice um, that families can help lead students through if that's necessary. There's a space for the name. Um, there's a question, how was your morning? Great, okay, not so good, I need to talk. Um, alongside some emojis, some picture support. Um, we have a second question, how are you feeling with choices paired with emojis? Um, how uh, were you able to find your work today? Yes or no? So really checking on in if um, students are able to access all of those distance learning resources. Um, that's paired with some picture support. And then we kind of get into some um, layers of um, other lines of questioning, kind of like what Rochelle was referring to at the beginning around um, kind of uh, creating a structure that goes from um, least to most kind of uh, uh, personal types of questions. So what is something you feel good about? Do you have anything to tell me about home or school? Is there anything that is making you feel bad? or there's a spot in here also um, for students to write in, I need help with. Okay, do I need to pause, Rochelle? Is there anything in the chat we need to address? No, I didn't want to break. A couple of people are still saying that they can't access and um, honestly, don't worry about it. That's why we pulled it up so you could just kind of get an example on the screen. Um, and we're gonna just go ahead and move into the next slide which shows, um, uh, a different tech tool to do some um, SEL check-ins. So this is Jamboard. And again, this is a resource that teachers can access through G Suite. And we have two different examples here. You can think of it as an interactive digital whiteboard. So these have post-its where students can either write their name or uh, import a picture, and they can really um, do a quick check-in with this. So how are you feeling today from five to one? There's some picture support up at the top with the fingers showing how you're feeling. Um, and this is a, is a great way to just kind of do that daily check-in. We have another example here that's a little bit, um, looks a little bit different, but kind of same um, idea around how are you feeling today? Good, okay, bad, paired with uh, picture support alongside those um, digital post-its where students can choose to write their name or if they don't want to write their name, um, they can uh, uh, post a picture. And one of the great things about this is that once teachers can go back in and check in, they can um, go in and see which students posted which post-its um, on the, the board. So if students don't feel comfortable sharing with the entire class live, uh, it gives some opportunity for um, uh, kind of just sharing it with their teacher alone. And Ashley, I cannot believe it, but we only have one minute left. Oh, um, so there so we go. We're gonna just quickly go through some of these considerations. Um, and for those of you that have any questions, um, we will. I will drop both of our email addresses into the chat and you're welcome to reach out to us. Um, we're happy to give you access to the resources. And I know that the slides and the recording is also um, gonna be made available. Oh, Ashley, will you go over that just really quickly? Will you go over that last you wanna go back? slide? Got it. 
Okay. So just really quick, some considerations for responding. So um, we found through distance learning that it was really important to create these opportunities for students to fill out um, Google Forms or Jamboards, but it's really important for teachers to remember to create that space for response. So making sure they're listening to understand, make the time to res respond, use a supportive tone, be flexible about adjustments. Distance learning has been very challenging on a lot of families and we need to make sure that we're working alongside families rather than being rigid, offering choices in terms of how students are submitting work. Um, additionally, bringing in mindfulness activities, um, bringing in movement activities and self-regulation. And then again, that synchronous live SEL opportunity is really, really important to have that live person that you're connecting with. Um, and then lastly, remembering to connect families to district and community resources. Um, FRCA, the Family Resource, is a great resource to use for virtual uh, counseling, um, making sure you're connecting parents to uh, uh, parent um, trainings, um, making sure that they're understanding how to use all the digital tools to log in, and even just checking in to make sure all families have the tech resources, access to internet, access to Chromebooks, and, and things like that. So with that, again, Rochelle mentioned that she's dropping our um, information into the chat. And we just kind of wanted to end here with a thank you and an example of a poll everywhere. How are you feeling about virtual check-ins? Um, and so I don't know if Rochelle, are you dropping that in there? Yeah, we've already exceeded our time, um, so I'm going to go ahead and hand it back over to um, our hosts. But thank you guys for being here today, um, trying to make sure that I've answered any of the um, additional questions that have come up. And both of our emails are in there, and you are welcome to reach out to us anytime. Um, I know some of you didn't have access to the um, uh, the survey and if you wanted to see it as a sample, just let us know and we're more than happy to share with you. So thank you and I know we're ready for our next presenter. Wonderful. Thank you presenters. Thank you Ashley and, and Rochelle. We do really do appreciate uh, you sharing with us the tools and thank you for your willingness to one have this recorded. We'll be able to send this out to folks um, and then the resources are absolutely wonderful. So this is really uh, uh, very much what we had intended to do and was really to share resources with folks.